biggest thing you gave me was time. You didn't really know me. We were from the same neighborhood and area, but I was with a group of guys that wanted to go to college, wanted to play ball. And you actually gave us that reality that, hey, this could actually happen because we saw somebody that was like us and that we wanted to become. Recruiting is about relationships. It's built on trust. It's built on doing the right things. And it's built on your head coaches and your athletic director, their vision. And I think we have two great leaders, both of those positions. So it makes it easy for me to go out and, and do what I do. Be aggressive. Let's win. Here we go. So Brandy, <laughs> Brandy, what what I like to hear from you now, what we all would like to hear is how 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 did you arrive at this point in your career? What are the what what, what were your stops along the way, and what were those significant moments that has made Brandy Stewart into the leader that she's become today? Oh man, um, I guess that starts with you know my parents at this point. Um, I was one of those kids I hated school like I and not like I hated school in high school I hated school in kindergarten I was trying <laughs> to find ways to not have to go to school from a very young age um, I have an older sister she's three years older than me we both wound up playing softball so it's just two of us it's two girls um, I, my mom and my dad grew up in a two-parent household fortunate enough to be able to say that and uh, my dad played um, football, basketball, baseball at Richmond High in California. I'm a, I'm a Southern California product. My parents were born and raised in, in Northern California. And um, my dad was coaching football. Mm -hmm. And my mom said, okay, so something's wrong with this picture. You're out here coaching other people's kids. And our daughters are cheerleaders for other people's kids. Like if you're going to coach and we're going to spend time in sports, then you need to coach our kids. And so we went through a bunch of, you know, different sports and softball was the one that kind of landed and stuck. And so um, I played softball throughout my high school career. I, the reason I mentioned my sister, so she's three years older than me. She played softball, but it wasn't really her passion. And so she, her senior year told my parents, like, I don't really want to go out of, out of state. I want to stay here. I want to go to UCLA. So they allowed her to do that, forego playing sports in college. And I thought, oh, wait a minute, that's a choice. Yeah. And they said, no, slow your roll. Somebody can pay for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Somebody can pay for you to go to school. You're going to college and playing softball. And so um, that kind of kickstarted this whole thing where I was like, all right, well, if I'm going to go and have to go to college, I'm going to go somewhere where y'all have to call me before you come. And so all of my recruiting trips were the Midwest to the East Coast. Um, because I didn't think about going to school, I hadn't really done a lot of homework on any of the universities I went to. I really kind of went based on the coaches, their mascots, and where they were located. No idea. Um, but I landed at Florida State, and it changed the trajectory of my life. I could have never imagined sitting in this chair, didn't even know college athletics existed, um, if it weren't for me going to Florida State. You know, God doesn't make mistakes. And so... Um, I wound up going to Florida State. I um, got there as a wide-eyed freshman, and um, I wound up getting there and playing for a different set of assistant coaches than the ones that recruited me. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of threw me for a loop a little bit because, you know, I'm kind of one of those people, like, I got to know these folks, I'm in with these folks, and then all of a sudden, the landscape changes. Different folks. Different folks. <laughs> um, so, you know, I remember things were just kind of okay, right? So you already have a kid that doesn't want to go to college. And then I get there with people I don't feel like I really, really know. Um, and I remember calling my parents. It was the day of or the day before we were going to play the University of Florida in softball, which as you can imagine, being at Florida State, it's a big deal. And I just told them like, listen, y'all, y'all may have to find me another place to go to school. Like this, I don't think this is going to work. And so they said, okay, well, this isn't really how this works. You're in the middle of a season. You're in the middle of a semester. Finish the semester, finish the season. If you still don't like Tallahassee or Florida State, we'll find somewhere else for you to go to school. But understand, anywhere you go that's not going to be home, you're not, there's going to be things you don't like. Adversity is everywhere you go. 
And so they told me to um, take some time to learn more about the athletic department, take some time to learn more about Tallahassee, give the school and holistic experience a, a shot. And then if I still didn't like it, we could revisit. So I rolled my eyes, hung up the phone, <laughs> took their advice. And um, that conversation led me to a woman by the name of Pam Overton. And Pam Overton at Florida State at the time was like an associate athletic director for student services. And so I went in, talked to her, because I remember meeting her upon my, uh, my, upon my arrival. And um, I was just kind of telling her what was going on, wasn't really kind of vibing with Tallahassee. And she said, well, try SAC, try our student athlete advisory committee. And I was like, what? All right, you know, I'll try it, whatever. And it was my first meeting. Dave Hart was our athletic director. He walks in. And so everybody's like, oh, Dave Hart. I'm thinking like, all right, bro, you know, what, what's this? He's gonna kick off the meeting. We're gonna do whatever we do, whatever. I'm still learning about this process. And he went around the room and asked each SAC representative to talk about what's going on in their program, anything he needed to know. And so everybody was going, and I'm like, oh, people are actually like telling him things. Like, okay, this is how this works. So I told him, I said, hey, our cleats aren't great. I said, you know, I know it's not a big deal, but like our cleats just, they're not great. And so he said, what do you mean by that? I said, well, they kind of hurt our feet, you know, whatever. But like, that's really basically all that's going on at softball. We're good. <laughs> Two weeks later, we all had new cleats in our lockers. And I thought, oh, wait a minute. Like, this is a thing. This is really a thing. Um, and so I just kind of dove in. I dove in with Pam, Hart, with Pam Overton. I dove in with Dave Hart. And just thought like, okay, there's something to this thing. Like these people really care about who we are as people. And from that point in time, um, I just grew in my, my responsibilities within SAC, with my relationships with people at Florida State, got to know more administrators. Needless to say, I wound up staying. And uh, we turned the Florida State softball program around. We, we took the program back to the World Series my junior year, which was like the first time in over a decade that the the um, school had been back to the World Series. And so we saw some success and I was able to see some success off of the field. I was our ACC SAC rep. I was our national SAC rep and just thought like, oh my gosh, these things are really great. Um, and then I, I just wound up um, graduating from Florida State. Pam told me I needed to get my master's degree. Again, hate school, but okay, whatever. So I got my master's degree. They paid for it. Um, I thought I was going to work in community relations for the Atlanta Falcons or the Atlanta Braves. I just knew that I was going to stay in Atlanta. I was going to live my best life. It was yeah. going to be great. Um, as you can imagine, that didn't happen. Um, yeah. I did not get that call from, from the Braves. Like, oh, they didn't call me. They don't know. They don't know. <laughs> And so um, I wound up going back home. So my parents had moved in the meantime. They'd moved to Colorado. So I went back and I was living with them in Colorado, working at Nordstrom. And uh, my, my boss at the time said, hey, you know, we have this manager and training program. Would you like to do it? And I'm like, yeah, I guess, you know, if I'm here, I might as well do something and keep rolling. And um, I'll never forget, I was, it was an evening. I was on the, the Nordstrom floor changing out um, our displays and Dave Hart calls. And I said, hey, Mr. Hart, how are you doing? And he said, what are you doing? I said, well, currently I'm in Nordstrom and I'm fixing, um, you know, the, the, I'm changing out the um, displays. And he said, okay, there's a job that's open uh, at the ACC. It's in championships. I think you'd be a great fit for it. You should apply. And I was like, mm, okay, I'm, I don't know, bro. And he's like, you should apply. Okay, heard, message heard. So I applied for the job, interviewed for the job, wound up getting it. Um, and that was the kickstart of my career in college athletics. And um, so I worked at the ACC as assistant director for championships. Um, I was there for a year. I loved it. It was a great experience. Um, but I realized I was too young to be working at a conference office. I was 24, 25 at the time. At lunch, everybody would sit around and talk about when they're retiring. And there's like four of us that are like, yo, we just started. Like, what are we going on? <laughs> right. um, but I realized I missed the connection of the student athletes and the student athlete experience. And so um, an opportunity opened up for me to go back to Florida State. So I left the ACC. I went back to Florida State um, to work for Pam as the assistant director of student services. I was there for about 13 months. And she called me, I was moving from one apartment to another in Tallahassee and she called me and she said, hey, would you ever live in Tuscaloosa, Alabama? And I was like, 
I mean, yeah, I guess, why not? My sister's on the moving truck, like we're literally moving you from one place to another. And now you're talking about moving to a whole nother state. And so Alabama um, was looking for somebody to replace Karen Lee who left to go to Ball State. And, um, you know, again, like when your mentors tell you something and give you some nuggets, you take them and run with them. And so I, I interviewed with the folks there and got to know Kevin Allman and Kim Johnson at the time of search, she's now at TCU. And um, I took the job at Alabama. And uh, I was there to run their day-to-day -day shop for life skills and student athlete development. Right, um, hold on one yeah. second. So when your wife kind of interrupts your podcast. Oh, you get up. Yeah, you get up and go. I mean, because sure. I mean, she's that wife that's going to just keep knocking. Oh, I know you're in there. <laughs> I know you see me. I know you know it. You know my knock. You know my knock. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. I'm sorry. No, you're good. So, um. So worked at Alabama. I was there for about seven or eight months and I got a call from um, some of the senior leadership at Florida State. There had been a transition in leadership um, and some changes made. And so I got a call to ask if I wanted to go back to Florida State um, and take Pam's job. And uh, she was one of the staff members. They had just transitioned the whole senior staff. And that was probably the most challenging decision I'd made at that point in time in my career. Um, knowing how that transition happened. But then I thought to myself, but I can honor her and everything that they've done by going back to Florida State to restore and uphold the culture that had been built. And so I went back to FSU. I was there for about four and a half years or so. Um, and I'd been the interim SWA a couple of times. We'd had some turnover. Um, but I got to a point where I was just a little burnt out and I thought like, all right, I'm burning the candle, both ends in the middle. What am I doing? I, I don't have a, a social life, a personal life, all of these things. It was just me, my dog and my townhouse. So um, I left college athletics. I left college athletics. I went back home to California um, and I worked in high school sports, which I thought would be just much easier. No drama. Well, okay. So then back in high school sports in Southern California, where you have all these kids that are transferring from school to school, all these different pieces. Um, and so I did that for about three years, but I realized as much as I loved having a social life, I really missed life with student athletes and being able to pour into them and, and build with them and, and build a program. Um, and so an opportunity presented itself at um, UCF. And so I took a job at UCF. I was the SWA and, and senior associate AD and wound up staying there for about six years where I finished my career at UCF as a deputy AD under Danny White. Um, and then this job opened up and I got a call from somebody who said, hey, they're looking for, you know, an SWA at Texas Tech. And I was like, oh, that's great. Like, do you need some names or what does that look like? You know, you need some help finding somebody. And they're like, well, no, we called to see if you were interested. And I was like, mm, is it still in Lubbock? And they were like, yes. I said, no, I don't know. I don't know if Lubbock is for me. Um, and then I just sat and I thought to myself, though, at that time in my career, just looking at the different puzzle pieces that had been put together, I remembered that it's not where I live, it's who I work for. And I knew that Kirby Hocutt was, I didn't know him, but I knew that he was very well respected in this business and that he would be somebody that I could learn from. Um, and I ultimately would like to be an athletic director. So um, I thought, why not give myself an opportunity to learn from someone different? I had done a lot at UCF and felt like I had left them in a good place. And so that brings me to present day where we are here. So I've been at Texas Tech now for about seven months um, and have enjoyed this journey and, and learning about things in the Big 12. And as you know, all of the other pieces that have come along with that over the last few few weeks with conference realignment, but um, it has been an incredible journey. I have been incredibly blessed with the opportunities that have been presented to me, but along the way, the, the common theme has always been student athlete development. It's always been um, having an opportunity to impact the student athlete experience in a really positive way. Um, and everywhere I have gone, I have carried Pam Overton with me. And so it has been a blessing to be able to serve in those capacities. And I've just really enjoyed the opportunity to serve here as well. And that, that is a, now, of course, I, I've gone through your bio, but it's always really cool to, to, to take the words that you're reading and hear them 
from the person, the person who walked the walk. And I think, you know, people can learn from, from our walks. However simple they may be to us, you can learn because what I what I hear from you is listen, you have you have to have good mentors. Yes. What I hear from you is that okay, it's okay to not like school when you're a kindergarten. Because <laughs> <laughs> eventually you'll get a master's degree. Yes. Uh, but 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 I hear strong parenting. Yeah. I hear, I hear your parents being very much influential in your yes. life. And and I hear what you just said. I hear that the student athletes are important. The student athlete experience is important to you. And, and if I was a student athlete listening to this, I would understand that I have a voice. Yeah. If I take the if I jump on the opportunity, if I step out and be a part of SAC, yes. I can make a difference, you know, in what's going on in my world by not leaving it up to somebody else. Absolutely. Um, so, so my next question is, is if you could talk to the young Brandy Stewart, she's young now, but the yeah. younger version of yourself, what would you tell that young lady? That you I would tell her so many things. Um, <laughs> you she? know, I, I would, I would tell the, the biggest things I would tell her, um, Number one, I would tell her diplomacy matters. So, you know, I grew up in a in a home and in an environment where um, our voices were heard. Now we had to learn how to share our opinions in a respectful manner and and be appropriate with the way that we shared our and expressed our feelings and perspectives. Um, but as I was coming up in this business, um, I didn't always have the level of diplomacy and my delivery of information um, that I, I could have and should have. So I would tell younger Brandy, be patient, find your words, use them wisely. And you people are listening. So you can't just pop off at the mouth. Like you have to think about what you say. Intentionality matters. So I would tell her that. I would tell her to. Um, to use the space that she's been given in a way that's going to be beneficial for others. Um, I would tell her early on that, yes, you might be young, but you are still opening doors for people that are going to be coming behind you. So be also be very um, diligent in the path that you are walking and then making sure that you're continuing to keep doors open for other folks, because even at a very young age, I was the only, I was the only in tables, at tables. I was the only in meetings. And um, I need, I, I, I tried to use that space for good, but again, I wasn't always playing chess. Sometimes I was playing checkers. Right. So I would tell her like, continue to do what you do. Recognize and acknowledge the space that you've been given to do your work and understand the importance of your voice. And, and with all of those things um, in concert, then be very um, intentional about how you do your work and how you choose to use your influence because that not only matters right now, but it's going to matter for you in the future and it's gonna matter for those who come behind you, um, you know, further on. Right. So, so I know that you've been put in positions where you have people who, who work with you and your ability to lead them is important to you. I, I know that. Yep. Um, and so what I would ask you is, is how would you describe your leadership style? And, and from the start of your career to today, would you say that that style has changed? Yeah, um, it's definitely changed. So right now, well, we'll start back then. So back then, um, you know, some of my biggest leadership moments and lessons, when I went back to Florida State the second time, I, I had um, advanced over somebody who had been there when I was a student athlete. And so trying to figure out how to leverage their feelings and negotiate my role and then still lead and get a group of people to do what we need to do um, was challenging for me. And so I didn't know how to navigate that space because I wanted to be um, 
I wanted to be mindful and respectful of this person and these people who I am younger than who were there when I was a student athlete and now I'm their boss. Um, so I had to find my way. Um, so very young, I would say that I tried to be very collaborative in my leadership and I probably gave more um, than I, sh I should have because I didn't know how to navigate it better. Um, but I, I was I was just trying to be a team player at that point and not necessarily a leader um, in those spaces. Um, I think where I'm at now, and it's not like a technical leadership term, but I'm a player's coach. You know, I'm very intentional about the people that I have control over hiring. But when I'm working with people or leading people, I really do try to meet them where they're at. Um, and I challenge them and, and make sure that they're prepared um, to lead in a way that is going to be beneficial for their per continued professional development. So um, I'm collaborative. I um, do set some standards and some goals though, right? So like I always tell people, I'm not easy to work for if you're just here to collect a paycheck or do the bare minimum. But we're gonna work hard, we're gonna play hard, we're gonna have fun, but we're gonna do it together. So I like for people to feel like they're on a team. We all understand everybody has their roles but we're all on the team, we're here to do it together um, and let's have a good time while we're doing it. But I'm also along the way trying to, again, meet people where they are to make sure that they're getting what they need in order to, to move to their next step. I, I like to have what I call Thanksgiving. I like everybody to be at the table. We don't have an adult table, we don't have a kid's table. We just have a table where everybody gets to sit and eat because I think that that is important. I'm confident enough in the work that I do and the spaces that I lead, that I like to bring my people with me so they can see that, get exposed to it, um, so that they can continue to learn and grow too. So uh, it's not a technical term, but I'm, I'm like a player's coach, I would like to right. say. Right, right, and I, and I like that because that's what I would say that I am as a coach. Yeah. So, so we're talking about coaching and, and in your position, you're hiring a coach. Yeah. So, so you're hiring a coach what are the things that you look for in a coach? You know, someone that you want to bring on to your staff to coach your teams. What are the things that you look for in, in your coaches? Yeah. Um, so something I learned from Danny White that I will take with me forever wherever I go. Um, the first thing that we do when we're getting ready to hire a coach is allow for the student athletes to um, identify three or four representatives on the team to come and talk with us about what they're looking for in a coach, right? So they, they feel like they have a, a part in the process. Um, if I've done my due diligence as a sport administrator, I know the makeup of that team and I know the culture of our space. So I keep those things in mind as I'm looking for a coach. So the first thing I do is I look for somebody who wins, right? Obviously you want somebody who can win, who can come in and produce. Outside of that, when I'm talking to coaches, I'm talking to them as people. So I want to I want to know about them. I want to know about their family. I want to know about what their former student athletes would say about them. I want to know what their coworkers would say about them. I'm looking for somebody who can be transformational in their leadership, somebody who can come in and truly understand that student athletes are people first. You know, they're not students first. They're not athletes second. They're people first. So how are we going to groom and grow these people into becoming productive students, productive athletes, and productive citizens? Um, so when we're in our interview process, so after you do all the, that legwork, right, and just do your background, when I'm talking to coaches, I don't ask any questions about the sport. Um, I, the one question, that's not true. The one question I do ask is, how do you see your schematics marrying with the team that you have now? What does that look like? Because I wanna know that they've taken into account the people they're inheriting and that they're not just planning on once these people leave or once I push them out, I'm, this is what I'm gonna do. Um, again, that goes back to the transformational leadership piece. You, you need to, to grow the people that you've got, whether you right. recruited them or not. Exactly. Um, so I look, I talk to them a lot about people. I talk to them a lot about, like I ask a lot of personality questions, I ask a lot of character questions um, and behavioral questions. I ask about their staff. Talk to me about your staff. How long have y'all been together? Why do you like everybody? What roles do people play? I wanna know that folks are thoughtful and methodical in the way that they lead and in the way that they coach. Um, so those are the things that I look for when I'm hiring a coach. Um, those are that's what's going to stand out to me because i want somebody who can build and sustain a program and not just win with their people 
they're right. going to have to be able to do that across the board. Which is, which is, you know, in this day that that we live in, this sports world that we live in, it's right now, mm -hmm. right now. Um, but like you said a minute ago, uh, it's about dealing with people. It's about transforming people because they come to you as one person yes. and they should leave as another, right? Yeah. It doesn't matter, you, you know, you, you would look and say, well, a kid came from this background and oh, no, no, all of them should have the opportunity to grow yes. and change over the course of the time that they're with you. I've had many coaches, we always say, if the only thing you learn while you're with us is how to tackle, yep. how to run, or how to block, then we fail. And that's yep. so true because as a as a former student athlete, man, I, I can't remember any of the coverages that I learned. Yeah. You know, man, I, I do remember the fundamentals of tackling because I'm still <laughs> teaching them. But it's so much more important the things that those coaches told me off the field. Yeah. Much more impactful in my life today. Mm -hmm. lessons that they taught me off the field. So, so as a coach, I, I really, I really locked into that. And, and, you know, sometimes my players, they make the faces that my kids make. Sure. But when I talk to them about how important it is to be early for the meeting, you know, not, nothing to do with the coach wanting to start the meeting on right. time, but it's just important to who you are. It's yeah. important to say to an employer, Hey, I know my interview started at two, but I'm gonna be here at about 1.30 and I'm gonna make sure this yes. is still in operation, whatever yes. it might be. But but it's just good practice, you know, as a as a person, you know, who, who is looking to advance. So I got one final question. Yeah. A lot going on over there, but I got one final question. And it's it's a question about your future. Right. Yeah. Where do you where do you see yourself? And I know you're in this position at Texas Tech and, and, and loving it. But but where do you want to be in five years when you think about your career? Yeah. Um, I and, mean, it's just that number. But, you know. No. Yeah. No. Sure. Um, you know, I, when I came back into college athletics, I thought that I always wanted to just be like the number two want to be the number two and want to be able to help run the day to day operations of the athletic department. Um, but what the time in COVID has taught me what all of the social unrest and social injustice has taught me um, is that what it exposed for me was we don't have enough people in the AD chair who know how to provide transformational moments, experiences, cultures for student athletes. What those moments, what NIL, all these things are telling me is like, at some point we became transactional. We became scared to talk to student athletes. We became scared to help young people. And I'd like to restore that back into what we do. And I know I'm one person and I would be at one institution, um, but the last two years have really changed and reframed what I want to do with my career over the course of the next, you know, however many years, 20 years, if I'm lucky enough to stay in this business that long. Um, I, I want to, I would like to be an athletic director to answer your question in the next five years. Um, there's one particular place that I would like to do that, but I would, I'd like to, to be in a position where we're reframing the narrative and where we're taking some of um, what has been distorted back. I want to restore relationships and true real relationships with people within athletic departments. I want to restore culture. I want to um, be in a position where young people value the moments that they're in and the people that are doing it for them. But I also want the people that are serving these student athletes to remember why we do the work that we do too. I think that there has been a lot of connective tissue that's been lost amongst the adults and the student athletes. And um, I am where I am today because Dave Hart was a transformational leader because he cared about us as people and because he built an athletic department where people cared about coming to work every day. And it wasn't to get their paycheck, it was to make sure that we were serving these student athletes and we were serving each other. And I don't think that we're too far 
down this path that we can't get back to that. Um, but I do think that there are a lot of folks in our industry who don't believe it because they haven't seen it. And because I've been fortunate enough to see it and live it, I wanna be able to be in a position to show that you can do it. You can win, you can win with integrity, you can win with relationships. You don't have to suffer comprehensive excellence for anything. And comprehensive excellence means that we really focus on the whole person, whether they're a student athlete, they're a coach, they're a staff member, We've got to get back to meeting people where they're at. We've got to get back to giving back to people and, and to build relationships. And I just, I think that that's really important. Um, so long winded answer to say that in the next few years, I hope that I'm in a position where I can not only influence the culture and the experiences of the people at the institution where I, I may be leading in that space, but that I can also help holistically within our structure and our governance structure and, and the NCA culture in general um, to bring back some of the purity of why we do what we do and how we do what we do. So I'm, you know, might be Pollyanna, but um, that's my plan anyway. Well, it wasn't, it's not Pollyanna. And the, the, the special thing about you, Brandy, is that, you know, the, First time I ever heard you speak, that's what I thought. Mm. It's, this lady is a transformer. This lady is a special leader. And so I know Thank you. That, that you that's who that's who you are. And so that's what you want to do. I just believe that God does not give us the passion to do the things that we do and not allow us to be able to do them. So you want to do that. As a coach, I'm listening to you and thinking, you know what? She's stealing my stuff because <laughs> <laughs> I believe that, yes, it's football, but I believe that I am going to use football to change the world. Yeah. You know, the people that I interact with, students, student coaches, coaches, mm -hmm. uh, student athletes, those people, those are my weapons. Yeah. I'm going to use them to change the world through through football, through this yeah. game that that we that we play and we think is it's real fun, I'm going to use that to change the world, to change the way we look at things, to change the way we look at one another. Yes. Uh, Positive so, deviance. Gotta have it. <laughs> you're not Pollyanna. <laughs> you're Brandy, and I'm I'm very excited. So so honored to have you on, and uh, looking forward to continued connection with you. And uh, uh, you know we'll we'll get this conference together. We'll yes. figure this out uh, because it's it's been around for a long time, and there's a lot of special people that are a part of it, and it serves communities, great communities. So so I'm excited about where we're going there, and uh, don't let anybody like my mom used to always say, don't let anybody tell you any different. And so, uh, but again, I, I thank you, and. Um, and I enjoy your day. Good luck to you guys. Uh, good luck to you. Uh, but good luck to you guys as we keep rolling throughout this season. Thank you. Same to you. Thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed the conversation. And I know our paths will continue to cross. So I look forward to it. Um, sure. And best of luck to y'all, to you and your career. I um, One day I look forward to the day that you have your press conference as, as uh, you're announced as the next head coach of whatever program. ABC I University. Fantastic. Thanks.